Last time on The Last of Us. Nothing. This is the first episode of the season. Season one, episode one, The Last of Us. Let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, how did you feel about The Last of Us this episode? This was fun. You know, it's been a long time since I played the game, but I saw the shot for shot remakes. Like I felt I was transported back in time. Like this is beautiful homages to that, the, the original content. Yeah, I agree. Also, I realized I can't handle that opening cutscene ever. The opening cutscene where they're talking about the mycology, the guys like on the panel. Oh, no, no. The opening cutscene from the video game, which I guess is like the, oh. the, the second or third sequence in the right. episode where uh, Joel, you know, and Tommy and Sarah run away and then Sarah dies. I can't handle uh, it. I cry every time. I can't do it. The the city pandemonium sequence where mm-hmm. people are dying and you can't tell who's good and bad and they like just run over people. Ooh, ooh, yeah. it fucked me up. Yeah, I got I get messed up every time. I can't handle that. And then, yeah, and then when they get to the then when they get to the future, it was great. It felt like the game again. They really nailed the. They they changed it slightly where it needed to be changed, and it just felt right. So felt good. And the casting. I thought uh, Pedro Pascal was nailing it as Joel. Oh, it was great. Yeah, that's good. Even Tommy. Tommy is kind of like a not the around that much character, but like he was killing his part. Yeah. Oh yeah. And and uh, Tess. And Tess. Tess oh. is my favorite character. Like she goes through some shit and then she just handles it like a boss. And she's like, nope. Let's just let's just move forward. Let's figure it out. And she's actually like the emotional like guide for for Joel. Yeah, that's right. Oof, yeah, awesome. Ugh, yeah. And then I'm still a little uh, unsure about uh, Ellie, the, but I'm hopeful. At first I was like, mm, I don't know if this is going to work, but now I'm pretty hopeful Yeah, that this is going to be, the casting was a good choice. Whew. That knife scene when she's like trying to stab and then she's like fighting for the knife. Whew. I felt yeah, that, was, that was good for her. Yeah. A lot going on. Love it. Let's see where the series goes. Let's do it. Yep. All right. So let's do some. Uh, oh, 1968. Why were we in 1968 yes. again? 1968 is the beginning sequence when they talk about like the like they they predict that if there was a temperature change in the planet and and fungus could adapt to it, then it could survive very well. They discuss like the limitations of of of. They discuss why mammals have the body temperature that we do it's it's a temperature where where fungus in the past would have would have died and so we we are co-evolved that's everything in 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 the planet we're co-evolved with the fungus around us now if something could out evolve us it would be very difficult for humans to react and this is exactly what they say in the beginning Mm -hmm. i guess one thing this uh this this dude on the left here which is the the guy who's like fungus can't get us (laughs) Okay. <laughs> yep the mycology <laughs> specialist yeah. in summary yeah. <laughs> fungus gonna get us yep <laughs> the fungus gonna get us guy uh-huh. um he said that because of global warming with a slight temperature increase which bumps up the fungus's evolution a little bit which okay. takes the overlap temperature from a fungus to into the human range which created the pandemic of fungus it's a pretty cool mm-hmm. idea that very cool idea and and it ties into the fact that that the cells of fungi is reproducing very rapidly as opposed to humans like it takes an entire generation for us to update our genes mm-hmm. i did hear in the game they talk about spores and you have to put on the gas mask hmm. but uh i think they took that out because i think that makes sense because spores are everywhere all the time and our immune system handles it so I'm glad they took that our, out. Our, I, I our immune system hand, sorry, sorry. Our immune system handles it because the bacteria, the fungus can't grow in the temperatures of our immune system. But if they're if they're, I guess I don't know. I'm not a mycologist. Is how do how does fungus spread? Um, definitely when the the mushroom comes up and the the fruiting body and it opens up and then that's how spores come out. But are there other ways that fungus spread around? I think spores are it. I don't, I, I don't know, but I don't, I don't and, know. I, and I, what I imagine is they're everywhere in the air all the time. Yeah, they really are. Yeah. And our immune system handles the spores. Thanks. But I guess, system. yeah, 
I, but if if a spore became virulent against humans and then we had to evolve defenses in the meantime we'd be dying a lot which i guess is what they're saying here which i guess is the exact scenario you would get some people that just happen to be resilient to the fungus and then if they can have kids then humans develop an immunity i think there was this there's this bat fungus in north america that spread around and it killed like 95 percent of bats ah. but then the bats were like while they were hibernating were changing their body temperature to combat mm -hmm. it mm. and there's some small subpopulation is surviving and they will continue on but in the meantime 95 percent of the bats are dying Nature is brutal. If I remember, there was also some theory that was related to that. Is something about the guano, the bat feces that that also propagated it. Um, I thought that idea was batshit crazy, but maybe I don't know. I'm not a mycologist. It's a good point. It's not a shitty idea. You saying that idea can fly? Maybe it hangs would... upside down and sleeps. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's let, let's keep going. Okay. So oh, what yeah. about this? Yeah. So 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 Sarah goes into I guess Joel's nightstand and she pulls out his watch with that beautiful natal strap and she pulls these things out like what? Oh, it's money. That's right. It's <laughs> in a twenty twenty three. It's just how how often do we handle money anymore? <laughs> I mean, I think a significant section of the population uses money. Oh, we've been watching a lot of Star Wars and Star That's Trek. That's true. Yeah, we're just there's Where no money. Have, there's no money. I guess well, in Star Wars money. there's credits. There's in Star, in Star Trek. There's no. Are we saying there's no money? Like it's all electronic, or no money and like no money, no money. I guess, yeah. So in Star Wars, there's credits, and then in Star Trek, there's cr there's some type of money because the Ferengi do stuff. It's just in the human in Starfleet, we don't have money. What are we doing? Let's The let, Last of Us. What are we? Let's... Yeah, and this is this is two thousand four as well. So money is more common back then as well. That's true. And I, oh, that's period specific. That's period correct. Like they didn't have the new twenty dollars bills back then. That's right. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Plus, and he's doing like carpentry or something, I think, as his oh, yeah. full time job. Uh -huh. So I think a lot of that business is done under in the cash. Table. Yeah. Mm -mm. I love how cash means under the table. I mean, it doesn't have to mean under the table. Have to mean. That's right. <laughs> You're supposed to de declare everything to the IRS, folks. Mm hmm. Maybe I really like the, the period specific $20 bills like it. Yeah, I like it. Proceed. Okay. Oh, the scene. Yeah, so so Sarah's walking home after school and then she sees three F-16, I think they're F-16s, three F-16s flying overhead. And so my question was, in what real life scenarios are jets scrambled? Um, yeah. I wonder if it's any any there, there might be some like government declares certain emergency and then they're scrambled as procedure um, ah like we've hit defcon 4 get the jets up like that type of yeah, thing that, that might be yeah but mm. are they going to be coming in at 2000 feet i'm not so sure mm -hmm. actually what jets are these i'm looking at the silhouette i'm thinking 16 um, single engine single tail but what are these big, these two big things hanging off the wings? They look like pylons, but they also look like they could be. But they're engines. so big for pylons. They're so big for pylons. They're so I'm so looking at the right there. Oh, that's why. I know those two. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are just giant blue engines on the back now. Yeah. yeah. I thought so they I were don't... F-16s. It's hard to say. Because, yeah. Look at the silhouettes. They look like un engines under the wing, which would be not F-16s. Oh, that would be interesting. Yeah, I'm unfamiliar with that then. Mm -hmm. I'm unfamiliar. There's with like it, yeah. these like torpedo engines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It felt amazing though, because it was like, oh, shit's going down. But 
would they send scramble fighters at 2,000 feet? I don't know. If it's a zombie outbreak? Not sure. Maybe. That's a good point. So I, I happen to live nearby an airbase. So I occasionally see like F-18s flying. Like, but they're like way up there. Like down low like this, that's that's something. First of all, you would phys- physically feel it. Like it's like roaring, right? And then like it, it would get your attention. Mm-hmm. So what about this? Oh yeah. So Sarah goes into the neighbor's home and the carpet is all ruffled up and she takes the time to to flatten out. Very good, Sarah. I like you. You you good person. But what was the significance? Like like why was the carpet ruffled? I guess was this the scene where she walks into the neighbor's place and uh somebody's like the guy has been bitten in the shoulder. Right. And right, the right, grandma's right. attacking everybody. Mm-hmm. Maybe it just signifies commotion has occurred. And it also means that if she sees something messy in the neighbor's place, she takes care of it. Good girl. Yeah, maybe. Joel, Joel raising you a good girl person. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, this is this is the guy. This is the uh, the neighbor who is offering, offering uh, biscuits. And yeah, don't do meth. Meth is really bad for you. This... Yeah, this is what happened. It was not the... The fungus, it was meth. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, have you ever seen a fungus make someone turn red and die? I haven't. No. And since it doesn't exist in the real world, we can't use our imagination to create a story where it doesn't what happens in an imaginary world. That makes no sense. Fuck you got me. Okay, okay. Got me. Got Grandma me. got him, is what we're saying. Yeah, but I still think it may be somewhat biscuit related. Um, here's this scene where, where the grandma's fallen down. First, first question is why did she fall? She's just like running out. And when, when you watch the video, it looks like she got clotheslined by something, but what, what, what's there? I thought she just stumbled down the steps cause she's such in such a rage for food mm. that she stumbled down the steps. I didn't see her get clotheslined. Maybe you can watch the clip. Let's watch the clip. Let's find out. Oh, 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 uh, one more. Actually, actually, I got the clip of this. Oh, okay. Let's do it. Ready? Get the truck! Right now! Ugh. Did she hit the door? I don't think so. Y'all want some biscuits? Wait, let's watch that one more time. What did she hit? I don't know. Oh, yeah. I heard, like, a crick in her neck. She, like, yeah, right? And then yeah. she just fell over. But what caused that? Right now! Ugh. Are the zombies in The Last of Us? Have they got maybe because she's old? They got arthritis. <laughs> she she had like a bone break. It's like oh, oh, I don't I don't move my bones enough. Uh, arthritis. Mm. But you know what? Wait, time that is you know what, that's very yeah. strange. Watch the whole clip again. Yeah. The whole clip. Get the truck right now. Yeah, there's nothing there. Y'all want some biscuits? <laughs> Ooh, yeah, this yeah. scene. So, 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 Joel is trying to calm down Sarah, Sarah, his his daughter, and then it looks like the power lines explode in the background. And I thought, like, what? Why? Why? Why did that happen? And um, maybe, maybe there's a transformer right there. But how often do you have a transformer in just in the middle of the neighborhood? I think it's actually fairly common. Really, most of the time they're underground, depending on how old the neighborhood is. Oh, I'm West Coast. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. They're in Boston, right? And so maybe uh, their their electrical systems are... No, they're in Austin. They're in Austin. That's right. They're in Boston later. In this, okay. Yeah. So right now they're in Austin, Texas. And I've never been yeah. there. So maybe they do have above ground transformers. Yeah, let's watch the clip here. Well, we're going to be brave and we're going to be battle. Hey, let's go. Come on. Oh, okay. I guess why in the it, the power is shutting down, and so they're not just shutting down the power. It, the whole grid is going to to shit, and transformers are exploding. It's not being maintained. I guess is that realistic? I guess. I mean, I, I mean, know. I guess why would transformers blow? It's like a shortage or an overdraw of current. So people are suddenly like asking for too much power, and then and then pop. 
we'd have to ask somebody who's in the industry because I think I, I want to say that like a lot of these things have automatic shutoffs, mm. so they won't explode. Oh, but Texas so, has its own power grid. Oh, that's right. So it's completely false. <laughs> okay, makes it, sense. It was yep. it was a little cold, and then it blew up. It's it re not related to the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> oh, this is coincidental. Coincidental. The airplanes flew over, shook up the wires, <laughs> and just popping, yeah. just popping left and right. Yeah, it was 34 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was like I'm done. Which 34 degrees is? Oh, I was trying to make a burn on text, but 34 degrees is in fact freezing temperature. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's slightly above freezing. Wait, what is free? I thought 32, Freez 34. 32. Okay, so, okay. Chose so in freezes, it's yeah, that's right. In, yeah. That's Texas freezing. It's 34. Degrees. Trying to rang on Texas. Okay, here yeah. we go. You know, since I've moved to where I am, which is cold, 50 degrees, so cold, so cold. <laughs> I miss, I miss the beaches. Oh yeah, so this is the scene. So they, you know, the zombie apocalypse is happening. Grandma's dead. Transformers explode, they hop into the car and now they're going across town. It was an amazing scene. I was irritated with Joel though. He was doing some serious side seat seat driving in this whole situation. It, I wanted some better um, crew resource management. Hmm. He was like, Joel was ordering Tommy to do this and do that. But it's like, Tommy is the one behind the wheel. He needs right. to make the decisions. Either Joel needs to be navigating or pointing out things, but not telling tommy what to do because tommy is the one that needs to be deciding tommy needs information to make the decision how do you feel about like like rally cars because rally cars you're your pilot is like right turn up ahead it's a turn degree of number five and so so that way joel could tell tommy what to do but tommy could have like a clear mind of knowing how to execute all you got to do is focus on driving so I think with I, I don't know about rally cars, but the way you the way that was just stated was turn coming up five degrees, this kind of bank. Uh -huh. He's not telling him what to do. He's providing information and the driver executes. Joel wasn't saying, oh, there's an intersection coming up. Be wary of the pedestrian on the right. No, no. He was saying like, go left, turn around, Car do this. That's and Tommy's tough. like, well, I, I don't know what to do. Do I go forward? Do I go backwards? There's people. And right. it, things were slowing down for Tommy. And Tommy needs to be able to have the information and then fit that into where he's driving so that he can drive safely but quickly and and along the lines of crew resource management who here is holding the gun like the pot the the driver's the driver and the co-pilot is is joel that means that sarah should really be the one like leaning out the window with a rifle uh, yeah right? probably just strategically right what, what i would do is i put i'd put sarah on backwards facing duty just mm -hmm. look backwards any information you see probably i mean Actually, how many yeah. guns do they have one you know? oh maybe so two. i would give it i would give it to joel yeah which means but, sarah rides shotgun without a gun and directs why would no wait Sa no, sarah no. needs to drive sarah needs to drive because she just focuses on driving and then and then tommy is the gunman and joel is the back guy uh, what? No, I don't think she should drive because she'd be too just. She doesn't. She has no experience driving. That's right. She takes the bus to school. So I think Tommy <laughs> driving is correct. Joel in the passenger seat with the gun, looking yeah. forward. Yeah. And then Sarah looking backward, telling That's right. information. You get and, you get two pie coverage. Yeah. And information goes from Tommy and Sarah. Sorry, from Joel and Sarah to Tommy, and Tommy makes driving decisions. There should be no commands yeah. coming from Joel as a side seat driver. Right. Slowing things up. Right. Yeah, I was irritated with Joel. I was like, Joel, stop, Joel. Stop confusing Tommy. Stop it. Let him drive. He's Let a him driver. driver. <laughs> yeah. Plus, it would start, it, if I was driving as Tommy, it, was, it would start to piss me off because I'm like, we both want the same thing. Yeah, honestly, I would pull over, put it in park, and be like, yo, Joel. Yeah, we got to work on the same team here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. CRM. CRM. For any of you side seat drivers out there, stop it. Stop it. Stop. It. I mean, there's just a way to do it safely. Safely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, this scene, there are three commercial jets yeah. that fly overhead. So one. And then I see two, 
And one up here. Uh, the third one is way, past us already. Okay, okay. Then oh, there okay. are four. There are four commercial jets. There are jets. four. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, f the first one flew overhead. So I don't understand why are they flying low and why are they all flying so close? Why are the commercial jets doing this? I interpreted this as um, they had been flying up high and okay. stuff on the ground was going to shit. Okay. And now they're running out of fuel. So they would just land at the airport. They just land at the airport. And then they would they would put they would communicate with each other and, and get proper distance and then land at the airport. Maybe the airport is overrun and there's there's been crashes at the airports, so then they have to find roads. True. Good so point. they're improvising. So I, I guess I guess if there is a national emergency, I think we ground all planes pretty pretty quickly, right? So it's up to each air traffic controller to be like like here's a cue, everyone get down. And so I guess, yeah, I guess you're saying that like the nearby airport was busted up so they couldn't do that. And so they're just looking for a place to land and they're like, follow me. <laughs> I okay. think pilots are trained to be able to do a emergent air traffic control where they can mm -hmm. talk to each other and land in a particular order. Hmm. Um, I don't know. That'd be super cool. But I, I think the proc, they're, so, they're too close. But maybe chaos, emergency, out of fuel, got to do something. There's a highway. Oh, and they can't go on the highways because the highways are jammed. Yeah. Where, so where would like you a... bring a commercial jet down? Yeah. Maybe maybe they're on approach to a large like state road that's not an interstate that's not jammed up. Oh, I see. That's right. Good point. We don't know what's ahead of them. They may be on approach to a safe landing place. Right. This is why you always need a private airport for you and your private jet. That's right. Never get caught commercial in the apocalypse. Commercial. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Ridiculous. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And here's just one of the planes, maybe one of those three or four, or maybe a new mm -hmm. one. It didn't work out. It crashed. It crashed. Actually, this sequence is quite something. I want to bring it up. Yeah. Oof. Right, I, go, felt, I felt, I felt, I'm not, I'm not in there. I felt scared. I was, yeah, it was intense. Here, we go. here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. I was actually unclear how that, that did that landing gear that came flying that hit the car and knocked them out. Is that what happened? Somehow, I guess somehow they got rolled. Could yeah. be that could be, I don't know what a pressure wave happened like that uh, i don't know mm -mm, i don't really think that i don't think an aircraft has enough explosive i think it's more of a conflagration than a detonation hmm. which oh, i still you're don't saying, you're saying the, the explosion isn't fast enough to create a pressure wave you would get or i guess a high density one you would get a pressure wave from the explosion but not like it's not like a like a munition explosion which is like a fast yeah apparently they make a distinction in munitions and other things between conflagration which is burning mm -hmm. and detonation which is some kind of pressure wave causing the right. explosion which happens rapidly and it's it's a distinct two distinct things like detonation is not conflagration happening quickly it's something entirely new oh, i don't quite understand it all yeah uh, i'm curious if, if anyone in the comments knows let me know I'm curious yeah. about that still looking mm -hmm. that up i don't know Anyway, I think in the games they got actually hit by a truck instead of getting hit by landing gear. But it was cool, anyway. cool, cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, not cool, but cool sequence. God damn it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> also, the best the best place to be in that scene is in the airplane. Because then you die quickly. Super quick. Done. Yeah. Done. Actually, yeah, that's preferable to dying a slow death with the fungus. Hmm. Tommy! Tommy, the brother, he's, he's he's a sniper. He shoots this guy single shot, headshot, close range, no scope. Boom, headshot. And the guy's a helmet on. Got a helmet. So he like, either his his rounds are penetrating rounds or like high enough power, for, close enough for his helmet, or he like just got the right angle to get up under there. Impressive, Tommy. Yeah, that was a... Uh hell of a shot plus Tommy should be a resistance fighter 
you're, he's under duress as well. This is not a this is an emotionally charged new situation, and he's Tommy able to just, focus and just be like, boom. Tommy just got in a car accident. <laughs> oh, that's right. So they're concussed. <laughs> Tom, Tommy's fine. But the thing that I was curious about this, if if we go if we slide to the left, was this soldier. He in the background when he when he first interacts with Joel and Sarah, there's a Humvee there. So was this soldier like alone? Or was it was he on patrol by himself with the Humvee? Usually don't you have like a squad usually? Maybe it's uh two people, one at the in the driver's seat and him shooting all comers. Hmm, maybe. The, you could again you could chalk this up to the chaos of the situation and they're That's ordered true. out to some perimeter. And whoever's available goes, you know, and it happens to be this guy. They might have even had to have spread them thin. That's right, because some of them are infected. That's right. That's yeah, and, even more point. I was thinking about the size of the radius that they're trying to, to create. That too, yeah. Mm. Mm. So I don't want to it does seem, they do, it does seem like only one guy, but. but maybe, maybe, but maybe, maybe it makes sense. Maybe, yeah. And then boom, boom, 20 years later, which turns out to be present day. By the way, we do have to watch the uh, the uh, the one scene. This, oh, brutal. Here we go, here we go. Are you ready for feelings? We're not sick. Sir, we are not sick! <laughs> and then, and this was brutal right here. Oh God! Oh. This got this got me. I couldn't do it. Maybe. No, I can't. I can't even watch. I can't watch it again. I can't do it. Skip it. Skip yeah, it. Skipping it. Can't do it. Can't she's do like, it. she's like looking at Daddy, and it. then she stops. I can't. Oh, can't do it. Can't do it. Twenty years later. Later. Yeah. Which is a, it's a jarring change. Cause it's kind of like, ooh, okay, I'm out of there. It's a little mental help, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure. yeah. Thank you for making me disassociate a little bit. I mean, honestly, this dystopia, better. <laughs> this, this, this scene feels better. It, it fe That's so strange, yeah, it's dystopia. Everything is gone to crap. Mm -hmm. And it feels better because we're no longer in that scene. <laughs> I'm, no longer, yeah. I'm no longer watching this daughter die in front of her father. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh I, was, I wanted to point out in this is, um, hold on a second. I wanted to point out here, I, I was a little, I, I, there's a couple good parts about this and a couple of interesting parts about this. So first off, I like the wall. There's a, there's a wall here uh -huh. yeah. and then there's a wall on the front. Uh -huh. So you have a two layered wall, Oh. which means there's you kind of have a, you have a little man trap. So a if little airlock. Let people, yeah, yeah, you can let people into the first wall and do security checks in a secure way. Boom, 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 from above, yeah. Without compromising the settlement so i really like that touch i like these two um watchtowers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah let's see this watchtower right here yeah a little and little uh, corrugated and over here con concrete and steel and that means that their engineering teams are still up and running oh yeah and the concrete is really solid there i was a little confused by like say this car right here mm -hmm. uh, they put the car with the the vines on it Okay. And then a separate car over here. They have multiple cars. Wouldn't you want to clear this area out? So it's very easy to see from the watchtowers who's approaching. Whereas if you have this like cover, then anybody on approach, even zombies, they could get lost in the clutter. So Good I didn't point. understand why they did that. So on one hand, having an open field allows you to see people coming up like approach vectors. On the other hand, if there's nothing in their way, then they could approach you very quickly. Like, say, if somebody had a, a working vehicle, they could they could drive up to your 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 wall very quickly. Um, I think what what the military does do is they put like blockades by just having just beat up cars in the way. So that way, if a car needs to go to the block to to the checkpoint, they have to like wiggle through the blockade. Um, oh yeah. But that being said, I mean, I guess if so, there's two threats. There's threats of of the zombies and then there's also threats of people that are malicious that are trying to come in um i guess this is the balance yeah maybe i guess this they have this approach here 
Um, that seems to be pretty open. Maybe they need to put some cars to make a zigzagger go. Mm -hmm. okay. Or maybe some nails pointing up so if zombies come by, they get stuck on them. Mm. Mm, there you go. A little bit of barbed wire, right? Yeah, I wonder what would... I guess we're Keep assuming they've done some trial and error, and this mm. is somehow optimal for what they need. Honestly, moat. Moats are awesome. Oh, that would that might be good. Take it old school. Mm. Take it old school. That's a lot of earthworks, though. Maybe that's, that's true. And we'll see in a bit they really don't have earthworks. That's right, yeah. Even these uh, concrete slabs, it looks like they've 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 like raised up mm. to form the wall look yeah. like they're pre-pandemic pre-fungus pandemic building up versus digging down just, just very different problem very, very different yeah yeah very interesting the good thing about this society is that it looks like their poster production is still quite good. <laughs> it's been, it's been <laughs> 20 years. Even if this was made like shortly after, I guess, nine, you know, 20 years, so it would be 2000s, these posters have held up. So do you think these posters are made before the, the fungus pandemic, or do you think these are made by Fedra after? Because these look, I, like they're, they're labeled Fedra. They're definitely labeled Fedra, and I'm... I don't know if Fedra may have been pre-existing, like it's their equivalent of the government, right? Mm. I think it's, yeah, definitely made after the the like the instigating event. I would say maybe a few months to maybe a year or two, but however, I mean the the posters themselves have held up for a long time, and that that machinery of the organization to be able to produce these posters. Um, and distribute them around to wherever they need to go um, was functional for quite some time. Do you think that still exists? I mean, we need printer technology, paper production, ink, ink, this high resolution photograph. Like, I think these it, are the last ones of these. Like, it could be like Woodbrock printing, though. Like you get some artisans on it and you just ooh. say, hey, get some, get the, you know, woodblock and chisel, mm -hmm, chisel mm -hmm. out, and then press it onto some paper with a bunch of different ink colors and registration marks it's possible yeah well besides the the pictures like this picture seems to be uh -huh. here and this besides that i think a person might be able to do that by hand yeah maybe maybe, maybe. Yeah, i don't know it's something to think about because that's actually a difficult set of maintenance and supply chains to set up to right. maintain those posters even just even just the skill set ah uh, this kid uh, they're going to kill him right like yeah it's just the way the 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 female officer said like I'll get you anything you want to eat anything mm -hmm. you want to play with i was like mm, that don't feel right mm -hmm. that's right and this is the death shot right here the death shot yeah, yeah. i think they had that little device that turned red right that that's the fungus infection. detector yeah mm -hmm. Which, by the way, has a very good feedback mechanism. It's either green or red. Right. Simple, easy to understand. That good to go or red to stop. Yep. Stop their heart. That's the red. Stop, stop, stop their life. Yep. Can we slide to the left? Slide to the left. Yeah. And so we see the next day, we do see that they burn the kid. This is, this is actually not the kid burning right now. Um, what I didn't... What I was surprised by was this is just like an open fire cremation pit, quote unquote. Like it's not it's not a pit. They just put up these concrete barricades. Like this is a lot of risk they're taking here. Like first of all, dig a hole, dig a hole and put these bodies down. So you're not lifting dead bodies over the barricade to throw them in. You just back up the truck to the hole, dump them in that way. Um, get a little bit of engineering going on. Get, get some people in the library to figure out how to do that. Yeah, and just anytime if if we're like concerned that any scratches could turn you dead, like you got to figure out ways to do things hands off as possible. Just yeah, yeah. Now that I, now that you said this, it is a risk because they're doing this burning in the middle of the city. And are you aerosolizing, that's or particleizing things into the atmosphere that are dangerous, including? Spores. The fungus and spores? Sure, sure are. Yeah, you sure I mean, are. I would assume most of them are going to get burned. 
but maybe some of them survive and go off. Maybe you want to right. do this on outside in some kind of well-engineered pit. That's a good point. I didn't even yep. think about that. Yep. And look at all this rebar just kind of sticking around. That's a hey, tetanus <laughs> just, just waiting to happen. And, and then also we don't know how the, the infection works. Like if you get any cut, could that any cut get infected? The protocols to make sure that everything was like just minimal risk would just, the protocols would be very stringent. Right. And this guy, say right here, he's dumping this body. If he loses his balance or turnarounds quickly, he's going to run into these rebars yep. over here. Yep. And get hurt or maybe get cut. Yep. You know. What, what they could have done was build a little ramp and then the truck backs up to the ramp. You open it up and you just roll bodies off. That's right. None of these lifting, none of this hefting, minimal risk to the people. Yeah, I mean, it's gruesome work, but I mean, important actually. Super important. And I think what we do over here, we have a picture of the she's gonna die red indicator. Yep. Bing, bing, bing. Ding, ding, ding. That means you're gonna die. You die. And is this the kid? This is the kid. This is this is the kid. Yep. Oh yeah. So they're throwing away the kid with his cool kicks, and and all all the textiles. Like this is twenty years after the society is shutting down. Like every scrap of fiber of textile of cloth mm -hmm. would be just vital. Yeah, and they look. His clothes look. Their clothes look in great shape. So I. I Unfortunately, it needs to be taken and used for a member of society. I mean, just how are you going to remake it? They must they must be able to remake clothes because they have clothes. So they have to have, I mean, clothes don't last 20 years, do they? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Because keep in mind, clothes have to last 20 years without modern maintenance conveniences as well. Right, right. Whoo. Let's see. Ooh. Yeah. Just, oh, yeah. Ooh. For example, these these um, masks that they've got on, this could have been made from that kid's shirt. Oh, I don't feel good saying that. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> but it's right. Like, like, how are you going to get fabric? Like, everything that your society has is inside of those walls. Mm -hmm. Or you have to go get it which is enormous risk. So since this, these resources, these textiles on the kid's body are readily available, you take them because it's low risk. Where do Maybe. you get calcium from? You don't have cows, but that kid has teeth. But I assume you can't do that because <laughs> of the infection. No, we're not taking, we're not harvesting a kid's teeth. Like, <laughs> you, you, you said yes to me for that. We're not doing that. I mean, my emotion is already giving me the heebie-jeebies because messing with the clothes, so. Oh, actually, you know what? Actually, actually, I think one of the things you need to do to make steel is you need some type of getter. You need something that grabs out impurities, and you can do that through, like, shellfish. I think you can also do it through animal bones. So, like, it, it would be usable. But there's something there's something about messing with a dead body that just doesn't I can't, just don't want to do it. I don't but, know what but, it but, is. In, but here, this is this is the end of human civilization. This is right. this is That's the apocalypse. Right. Like it it feels terrible. It's it's against your your human instincts, but it's for the species. Like yeah. So this is Officer Knapp. And he is here with a cushy job. He just, he hands out job assignments to people and he hands out money. This guy went to the library, right? I mean, I, I think this guy is like family connection with somebody or friends with somebody. And they hooked him up with probably one of the best jobs in the city. Right. No physical labor, very, very minimal risk for injuries. Powerful powerful yep. he gets to decide who does what so there's probably i mean a very could very plausibly could be some behind the scene dealings for him oh for sure that's got to be how it works because look how in informal these you know record keeping mm -hmm. methods are notebook 
no. no no oversight it's just whatever he does and that's that's what happens yeah so i was thinking um also i was wondering how the economy works here so i see this uh paper currency mm -hmm. which they you know, ration tickets have become paper have become currency yeah um i'm talking about counterfeiting you know who's who's printing these ration cards that's right you know is Fedra Central printing the ration cards? And who has control over that printing press? And then criminal organizations are going to be like, well, it's just a piece of paper or a piece of something. I'm going to try to counterfeit it. So, yeah. Oh, man. Like, oh, if you could you steal be... this box, like, holy crap. That's, yeah, yeah. You, you'd be super rich. Super Although, rich. I guess if you're super rich in this environment, how could you spend it without people noticing? Either way, it gives you a lot more options. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and also... even even if like even if the Firefly, the the insurrection group, they could mm -hmm. just transport money from one base to another and just mess up economies. That's right, because you could dump a bunch of currency into the economy and cause inflation with mm -hmm. those ration cards, mm -hmm. and then, uh oh. And and then the other settlement, which has had its money, its currency stripped out, like how does Fedra stay in charge? And they're like, we don't know how to give stuff out to people. Right. You get to, you get a scarcity of money and then commerce grinds to a halt. Yeah, you could really, if they don't have a control over this currency, Fedra that is, then mm -hmm. the Fireflies could really mess up stuff. I love how this, look at this record keeping here. Just nap doing his thing. Mm -hmm. Handing out assignments. Just part of a pen. A little stampy boy on a piece of random paper. Yep, and that's the ticket to <laughs> when, the high paying jobs. When this notepad is done, just no more work. No more. I, I'm assuming they maybe found a bunch of notepads somewhere, and but nobody else has that particular notepad. That's why it's official documentation. Like raided the elementary school. That's right, or the Office Max. The office Max. Is that still a store? I don't know. I don't know. I was also thinking, what kind of economy is this? Is this a command economy? Because the Fedra person is handing out work assignments. So it's not happening happening in a free market style. It's more of a command economy. Yes. Although he does give Joel the option of like like Joel's able to ask for different jobs. And he says sewers or something else. And Sewers are sweeping. And then which one pays more? The sewers. So Joel takes that job. So mm -hmm. it's still it's still a command economy, right? Because a, a free market economy would be the, a restaurant needs a repair. And Joel's like, I can do the repair. What's the oh, price? Oh, I see what you're saying. Without interference from Fen Fedra. Right. So it sounds like there's a command economy with official stuff going on with a black market slash free market economy underneath. And I buy it. Hmm. Wonder how good work quality is. Cable she management. Is a cool job. <laughs> she is a cool job. Just Overwatch. Awesome. What I did not like about this was just just this cable nightmare. This is, it's not it's not yet a cable hell. I've seen I've seen worse. It's not a rat nest yet. But it's this looks all sorts of un, unsafe. Um, there's fall damage from pe things coming out of the windows, and in particular, what I really did not like was down here in the lower left corner, right there. There's these yellow lines that go between mm -hmm. other lines. Like oh, I see, you, yeah. the, these lines should be separated because they carry voltages and th that air gap is needed to separate current from jumping between them. So now that you have this yellow wire rope, I don't know what it is going between, that's just an easy path, especially if it rains. Especially what, if it rains, that's an easy sh short. Mm -hmm. What if these are data lines, not voltage, not power lines? Even if they're data lines, they don't. Oh, you you mean the 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 long lines, the the straight yeah. lines? These are data lines. Mm, so I guess they would be low voltage, but still have some, and they still they're still carrying data. Mm, that would significantly reduce the risk. Yeah, it could. Quite. But having all these snag stuff without mm -hmm. clean cabling, I don't know. What what data stuff are they sending? Well, okay, so probably the internet doesn't exist. But they're going to have f probably phones or something that can be sent as voltages. 
across lines? I think the it would only be the only tech we've advantage. seen. Absolutely, yeah. If you can communicate by these lines instead of word of mouth or even like radio, you could, you like walkie-talkie radio, you could secure your comms. Um, the only tech that I remember was the radio guy, which which we haven't talked about yet. But uh, yeah. So maybe the radio guy is between cities, whereas there's data communication within a city. And they do have power, so maybe they could have electronic communications. Hmm. Maybe, yeah. But still, still, this yellow rope going between power lines, yeah. no good. Just, yeah, no we good. need to clean this up. And this is this kind of says it is a command economy, but there's also that free market, black market underneath, where it's kind of anything goes. So if you want something up on the pole, just put it up. Up, just, up you go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's this picture, and then also this picture which is also a cabling nightmare. Oof, oof, oof. Yeah. And I don't know if they're new cables, but I suspect they're 20-year-old cables sitting out in the UV all the time. That's mm. a good point, yeah. There's degradation on these. Yeah, you're going to get degradation in the, the cladding. Mm -hmm. That's going to start to crack and peel. Then you get degradation in the cable itself. Mm -hmm. 20 years of exposure. That's Once in there. a while it rains, now you have water plus damaged cables yeah risk 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 yeah actually fedra needs to get on that either start manufacturing new cabling which is not easy right and or putting in a new i don't know method of preserving the wires they already got this ain't doing it this ain't doing it ain't doing it oh yeah so this is similar instead of cabling this was like where do they get the paint it is red. Well, the Maybe Firefly is spray painted or painted uh -huh. with a stencil, the Firefly symbol in red. Mm -hmm. And then Fen Fedra is coming in and painting over it with white. Where do they get this paint? They, they must be manufacturing it. Yeah. It it it. Maybe it's lead paint. They got, they got lead in bullets. They wouldn't, they wouldn't harvest bullets to make paint. I mean, maybe. I mean paint maybe there's a lot of benefits to paint that we're not really knowing until we don't have paint paint I don't know. the most important thing yeah I'm actually, actually yeah so would i trade a thousand bullets for squashing the symbol of a, a rebel i mean actually maybe yeah right the rebel the rebel symbolism is much more dangerous could be much more dangerous. yeah yeah so there's that and then oh and then, so they have these joints in foil what a waste of foil I, that's right so, so are these tobacco or i thought i thought these were cigarettes just hand rolled cigarettes and what a waste waste of foil also Either. not that good it should be a plastic bag keep some moisture out that's a good point yeah because aluminum is really energy intensive as far as i understand to mine so hmm. it's not gonna i don't think there's any gonna be any aluminum smelting going on Oh, that's right. Aluminum oxidizes real quick. So you have to have some specific environments for to grow it. And I guess it doesn't really matter if these are marijuana cigarettes or tobacco cigarettes uh -huh. because they're going to be, everybody's going to want them either way. Kind of whatever it is, yeah. Yeah. And then it's just more about the economy. <gasps> mm -hmm. They're saying shoelaces are worth a lot, which means they can't yeah. manufacture shoelaces. That's Which right. That's to, what it seems. To me, it sounds like they can't manufacture. That would mean they can't really manufacture clothing and cabling is probably out of the question. Yeah, no way. So, hmm. Have you heard these stories about the Great Depression where people were like, every scrap of shoelace, I'm going to hold on to it forever because you never know. Yeah. yeah. I bet these people also experience this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every little scrap of something would be precious. That's right. Even if they could start manufacturing a lot of these items, they're still going to be very inefficient and scarce. So and even just the the human power to the, the hours to make those things, like you're right. you're diverting that person from another job that at mm -hmm. least from what we see looks like jobs need to be done. Yeah. Ooh. Oh yeah, I I just thought these signs were more signage that we we're talking about. Hmm. Curfew that's hours, it. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Oh, yeah, that's curfew. That makes sense. It's nighttime. Anyone shouldn't on it just, 
Shouldn't it just be sun down to sun up? Just time of year stuff. That's right, because summertime versus wintertime. Yeah. Yeah. I would, yeah, sun down to sun up. Yeah, that would be better. Which which is just, is more of a statement of what are the hours that we're able to visibly see people and therefore control? Like, Yeah, yeah. Maybe that's what effectively it is, that signs will. Hmm. This is a cool one. Report signs of cordyceps infection, coughing, slurred speech, muscle spasms, mood change. Mm -hmm. Safety begins with you. I like that end. Safety begins with you. Safety begins with you. Mm -hmm. Oh, but yeah. So this is this is the firefly, the resistance message, the, their meme. Um, when you're lost in the dark, look for the light. Um, but isn't that just isn't that just what you do when you're in the dark, like? And you're lost like it's that's that's just that's just true uh yeah so if so i guess it's a metaphorical statement so the darkness is fedra oh. and the light is the fireflies <laughs> <laughs> that, okay that makes sense why they're called fireflies now <laughs> i was just like why are they giving me instructions on what to do in the dark like i know what to do in the dark it's the bright thing go there <laughs> <laughs> but it's also not it's not a it's not a, a saying where it's plan of action it's just yeah you know it's a nothing yep. statement really <laughs> this, this episode makes more sense to me now <laughs> so what happened here this light i think the electricity oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so this is tess talking with a type of thug i guess um and and they're underground no they're they're above ground but behind a brick wall you can see the light the sky is light lit up so it's daytime and they have a light on inside during daytime first of all first of all wasteful i mean this this if there's any time in a society to save power it's in this place um but also this means that they have power so i wonder how they're getting that it's a good point do they have power stations is they have solar panels how do they this get is, power? This is Boston, right? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know what Boston's electrical infrastructure is like. Solar is probably no go. Cloudy a lot. Cloudy a lot. Um, Windy is inconsistent. Do they pull power from Niagara? I know Niagara oh. powers a lot of the, that eastern area, but uh, I don't know. Considering Boston has walls in this scenario, are they going to be able to extend power? And stability out to Niagara Falls to keep power infrastructure in place sounds not reasonable. I see what you're saying. So there could be a base at Niagara that operates Niagara, and there are base here in, in Boston. But you have to protect the conduits all the way through there, because mm -hmm. otherwise you could have these insurrection groups just damage one of your your conduits. Mm. What do you, What do you think the most likely way they're generating power is? Coal, probably coal. Yeah, but for 20 years, how do they transport the coal? How do they even get the coal there? At least it's not. So the supply lines for coal could be intermittent. So you don't yeah. have to do, you know, an escort quest every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, escort quest, yeah. <laughs> Whereas if it's power lines from Niagara, it's constant. You have that's to defend true. the whole line. That's true. Yeah, but maybe then, Fedra has a coal mine set up in like Virginia or something, and mm -hmm. they just periodically ship out coal to their bases. Mm -hmm. Maybe that means they're also have to run, maintain, and repair a coal-fired power plant in the city. Twenty years old without modern supplies is that reasonable? Uh, I, I I am unfamiliar with coal technology. Me neither. I wonder why. Yeah, if the, if there was a coal plant, could they also burn the bodies in there, or is it or is that a net energy loss not worth it? I would want to. My first guess would be you only can burn the coal because all the machinery will be designed for burning that specific fuel. If you start throwing like bones in there, oh, it's gonna get I all, see. Clog up the I works. I see you're saying. Maybe also. Yeah, you might have to like dig stuff out and you'd rather just keep the coal running all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. If anybody knows anything about power generation and how plausible it is for 
the grid in a city to be up after 20 years, let us know. Specifically in Boston. Specifically in Boston. 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 <laughs> Is there anything more, anything more you want to say oh, about I'm, this? Oh, I'm happy with that, yeah. Next picture going down. This yeah. next picture is the Radio Man. Mm -hmm. So Joel comes to see the Radio Man and he trades him cigarettes for some rapid communication. Mm -hmm. He gets to cut the line. And so the Radio Man, uh, Joel says, Joel, he says, he's like, what if the message came in at night? And the Radio Man says, either my wife or my son um, is listening all the time. And he says the son, the smart one. That kid went to the library. Absolutely. In fact, I was thinking about our library conversations before where we said in the apocalypse, you should head to the library because that makes you valuable. Super this valuable. guy has, who's a radio operator, has a line out the door. Out the right? door. The guns defend him. Guns. Because he has a skill operating skill. radios that he has, nobody else has. He can run all this equipment and repair it probably. So if you head to the library in the apocalypse, you become a guy like this with a line out the door with a mm -hmm. skill only you can do mm -hmm. and a bunch of books that you can reference all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not just you. He teaches his wife. He teaches his kid. This is his family dynasty. That's right. Yeah. All the messages that leave the base go through him. He can send them whatever message he wants, actually. That's right. And... The guns defend him. That's right. He doesn't need to be a tough guy on the street intimidating people. He's got people to do that for him. That's right. Because he's a valuable asset. So in the apocalypse, head to the library. Library. Whatever See happens. There. Because the guys with guns will defend you. This is an example. Mm -hmm. You also get the best cigarettes in town. Mm -hmm. <laughs> them, them handmaids. Yeah, them, them, well, them exist aids. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> cool shot of uh, Joel here, but I was also wanted to point out the equipment. Oh, yeah. See cables right. here, a mess of cables. So what is this? This was like a radio, maybe? Let me uh, start circling stuff. Yeah, I'll maybe sideways. Maybe. It's just stored, and here's this thing. And that, that's the handle. Mm -hmm. That's the handle you carry it by. Uh, okay. And this also is probably a radio. I see a dial. Yeah. Therefore, radio. Therefore, radio. Dial equals radio. Yeah. There's no dialing in anything else but radios. Mm -hmm. There's also more equipment here. I see, okay, I see a power strip. Oh, boy. Uh, I see a lamp. Yep. This lamp, is lamp. ridiculous. ridiculous. Um, custom cabling box. Oh. And then this maybe is some kind of... RF sig amplitude frequency controlling... Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Not a lot of people would know how to use that. Yeah. I think I have one more. Even just constructing the antenna that you put on your roof would have to be, you have to think about antenna theory. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And where you want to send signals and how far and what frequencies, AM, FM for stuff. Yeah. Directionalized, yeah. Yeah. Back here, I see some cabling. Nicely cabled. Nicely cabled. It's, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Here's a... Oh, there's some Heart. type of voltmeter there. Analog yeah, the voltmeter. Vol Maybe, yeah. I guess it could be gauss meter too. It could It could also be, I don't know what it could be. I mean, there's kind of a lot of things it could be. But yeah, probably voltmeter, ammeter. Hard to see. We can't Does really that see. say Dodsey toot control? Toot control. So <laughs> yep. controls this guy's toot. flatulence. Toot. Yep, toot toot. <laughs> and little little analog ghost. <laughs> and there's a bunch of stuff on the shelves. Can't really see. Okay. I mean that all all that shelf cuff stuff could be decoy stuff. But if you don't know the mm -hmm. knowledge to mm -hmm. know which one's important, this is all just. <laughs> it turns out he actually like has a little <laughs> tiny radio that is actually important. Everything else is just bluster and show. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> and it's all messy, just right. slightly so messy. Nobody else can so, figure it out. So nobody else knows his system. If he was all organized and labeled, everybody would be like, I know exactly what he's doing. Oh, yeah, this one button. Think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Super clever, dude. This is Joel's apartment. This is Joel's apartment in the post-apocalypse, and it looks pretty nice. I, honestly, like, their economy may be running better than ours. 
Yeah, well, you know, I was thinking if his his apartment's really nice, but maybe space is not an issue. It's everything is so depopulated. Oh. Everybody gets really spacious apartments. That's a good point. So yeah, maybe it's not. Maybe it's you know, space is not the issue. Other things are. Mm. I'm Coming back in. Yeah. So. It's not, there's not competition for couches because there's just not enough people that need couches. You, there are, uh, there are apartments that you could ransack that are unused and you can get a nice couch. Right. Hmm. Do you think Joel has a nice apartment and nice stuff considering his status in society? I think, so I think it's outsized because he has the, the drug dealing. So he has more money than he oh, traditionally yeah. would. So maybe this is like once you get inside his apartment, it's pretty nice. But from the outside, you can't tell. Right. And he does have connections within the security force. And he seems to be kind of a scary guy. So mm -hmm. maybe he has nice stuff. I'd hang out with him for protection. He's got this nice bed. Mm -hmm. On cinder blocks. Mm-hmm. Got this nice uh, lamp here yep. Yep. next to this wood just for fire hazard purposes. Yep, tied to it, right to it. Yep. Yep. Pretty nice. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I want to do equipment analysis here. Just like the radio guy, this okay. is the Firefly hideout okay. with Marlene here. Ah, Marlene. First, off, first off, organize your shit. What are you doing? What stuff is at a premium? Anything organize it plus if you need to bug out of this hq at you know a moment's notice That's because right. the fedras are on you like you need to, be able to pack this stuff up and get out immediately so everything needs here? to be almost ready to be out, out the door. almost ready to yeah. be out the door yeah just because your resistance doesn't mean you can't be clean that's right in fact i think i would argue as resistance if you want to be effective you got to be immaculate super orderly that's right, because they because you're like on a knife's edge all the time. You have no wiggle room for eh, there's inefficiencies, mm -hmm. but we're big we're big organizations. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah, keep it so, neat. Yeah, so this container here is, mm -hmm. you know, empty. We got a ragged looking bottle, cabling all over the place with various junk, miscellaneous tech trash. This looks very important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, cabling like is probably important it's kind of all over the place cabling you would have to learn how to take care of cables because you don't have replacements don't have replacements yeah so any kind of like what you have to know about don't bend it too much you know keep it so out of the, the sun the big loops out here these look yeah. great yeah these bendy foldy dudes yeah that's a lot of pinching that's a lot of wear a lot of wear yeah a lot of breakpoints yeah, and I've, I'm already seeing kinking happening in that set of wires. No kinky in the resistance. Absolutely Smooth not. Smooth no. around. That's right. So a little, little disappointed that Marlene isn't like, get on it now. That's a good point because she does run a tight ship. She does run a tight ship, yeah. They're like, we don't want to do these cables. Like, follow orders. Yeah. Well, I guess some more equipment here. It looks like it's just weapons with weapons weapon. containers. Just guns, is no ammo. magazines. No magazines? How do you know? No magazines. Oh, just looking. It looks like just guns. And when she, when she, in in the in the show, when she like she mm -hmm. like racks a slide, I don't see her oh. handle magazines. It just yeah. looks like each one already has one. Yeah, and also if you have to bug out all these loose weapons, they're getting lost. They're getting, they're getting yeah conf confiscated for sure. And guns are a limited resource. Very much so. Yeah, we got the one. I really like this scene because Marlene, so uh, this person's name is Kim. Kim. That's Kim. Yeah. Kim. Mm -hmm. Kim was questioning Marlene in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. And Marlene was like, follow orders, follow orders. And then she dismissed, she said the, this person who we never learned her name and this yep. person never learned his name. Once they're gone, she now explains what's going on to Kim. Yep. Kim needs to read the room better and be like, right. I will question Marlene's orders, but not in front of people. 
If I want to be a leader, I, I can't. I think this is like the military rules, right? They do this. So it's like the first and second command talk to each other, but in front of all the soldiers, they're like, no, united front. United front. So Kim needed to be put in her place. And I'm glad she was because she was degrading Marlene's command. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I think we can, I think there's a, a section oh, where we see this. It should be Actually, around think, minute 55, 50, 56, 35, 56, 35. Yeah. Here we go. What's your question? That's one of them. My answer is to follow fucking orders. And why do you have some random girl locked in a room and the guys you have guarding her won't tell me shit? People are asking what's going on. So I think she's really messing up there. What are you asking there? Yeah. She's like, why you... Marlene's like, why are you degrading my command stature in front of people? Shut up. I mean, not only her command structure, but I mean, her I mean, her command structure is the functionality of this cell. Uh oh, like command people, stature. Sorry, the, 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 the sorry, I misspoke. Her command stature is the functionality of this of this resistance cell, because if the res, if the people in the resistance here won't listen to Marlene, then how are they going to function as a team? That's right. Yeah. So good on Marlene. I thought that was a great dressing down in front of the kids. And the she kids also wasn't too, she also, also wasn't too harsh. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I also really it? like Marlene. Marlene's a, I think she's a good commander. Yeah, I do too. Was this body, was this the body of one of the guys that died in the explosion? Or just some other body? I think this is just an infected body. Who died and then the, the fungus kept growing as uh, in the corpse mm. i think that's it so i liked this picture because it's it's it's, it's fungus <laughs> so and not only so so on the, on the left side here we see this kind of micro micro rhizal growth this this growth that mycelium does when it like spreads out like that very good. It looks looks like it's looks like a healthy fungus. I'm not a mycologist, but it looks healthy to me. Looks good to me, yeah. <laughs> and then on the head there were these fruiting bodies, these little pointy boys. Maybe mm -hmm. we can get in there. It's coming out of the mouth. So that's one type of fruiting body. That's one type of mm -hmm. mushroom where they come out in these like needle like things. Um, and I looked it up like cordyceps, which is the mushroom that they're talking about, which does do this type of zombie type stuff in, in a sense. Uh, they look like this. Um, and then Elsewhere, like say on the top of the head here and also on the torso, these these you get these wide flat mushrooms and these things have gills underneath that they open up and they let the spores out. And I mean, next time it rains in your area, check out the that's how these work. So cool. Cool that there's like multiple types of of fruiting body type uh, ways to spread out. Uh, yeah, looks like a healthy mushroom, which is bad for humans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't know any of that, but it looked real to me. Looks good, right? Don't know how I knew that, but <laughs> oh, just I don't know. It looks like like fungus. I don't. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I've it's... interacted with fungus in my life, like mushrooms on the side of the road or whatever, mm -hmm. enough times in my life that I look the at back this, of I'm my like... refrigerator. Look, <laughs> you know, it happens sometimes. You know, they leave cheese and it happens. Clean, clean your shit. Fuck. Okay, let's start recording later. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, Ellie. Ellie did a good job here. Okay, so Ellie, she um, she like busts out the door and she tries to take a, a, a knife at Joel, mm -hmm. and she's like, she's, he looks at her and he's like, what the fuck are you doing, right, right? Mm -hmm. But actually, isn't she correctly responding to the situation where she's trying to stab this new guy? Because if you look at, at the next picture, like, the people that she knows, Marlene and mm -hmm. and and uh, Kim, they're still holding guns at Joel, like. From her mm -hmm. perspective, she is correctly like this guy's the outsider. Like, I mean, yeah, I don't. I think she was about to use violence against Joel. I think that was the right move. That's right, right? Yeah. And Joel kept the knife from Ellie, which is correct because he knew she, Ellie was going to stab him. Right. She's still a risk factor. Yeah. I guess when does it de-escalate? Is when Marlene and Kim establish that Joel is trustworthy right and everything settles down so i guess once they put their guns down that cues yeah. ellie to be like oh okay 
I guess. Yeah, sure. It was a cool scene. It looks yeah, like a cool scene. What's going on here? For Ellie, it would be super confusing. Because yeah. who are these people? Yeah. A bunch of people died. New people came in. I tried to stab. The people that mm -hmm. are taking care of me that are also imprisoning me <laughs> are pointing guns <laughs> at these people. Like, what, what do I do? The plot twist is, though, there's an errant arc in one of these cables burning the whole place yeah. down. Everybody dies. Yep. That's part of the Firefly exit strategy. You just burn the place down. We're good. No records. Uh, what do you want to say here? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, so so this is this is just after the interaction. I guess the whole interaction. Mm -hmm. This started mm -hmm. off because because the guy who had was a dirty dealer and he had gotten the battery um, that, that Jill wanted, they were exchanging the battery here in their headquarters. Like stuff could go bad in your headquarters and now your headquarters burned um why, why do they do that? it should have like a a neutral location and, and the the car battery guy should never even know where your headquarters is maybe filling in some blanks here they were planning on abandoning the headquarters that's right so they, they didn't leave. care yeah they didn't care if the deal went down at the headquarters because they're out that's right and they were out that night so it could have been a rush job as well yeah, it could have been a rush job. I guess mm -hmm. it's still a bad idea because if you wanted to come back and reestablish HQ, now there's info on where it is. But mm -hmm. maybe it's a rush job. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I buy it. Yeah. Still, it went down poorly. <laughs> I was like, operational vehicle? Like, yeah. Well, apparently, Fedra has better. There's, there's non Fedra vehicles and there's Fedra vehicles, and Fedra vehicles are better. Yeah, so I guess this is a non-Fedra vehicle because it looks kind of Russian. <laughs> <laughs> I know, no, I know what you mean. I, I know exactly what you mean. It's like barely functional, kind of thin yeah. stuff. Wouldn't be very yeah. rugged. Yep. Yeah. Which means there are lubricants and fluids and spare parts and tires right. and tires, things around enough to get this moving. Mm -hmm. Surprising after twenty years. I guess tires is the most surprising one to me because they have a shelf life. Even if you don't use them, like they oxidize, getting all brittle. Could you main, okay, so let's say you found a tire shop, multiple tire shops. Could you maintain the tires in storage if you knew to do that so they could be used in 20 years? Like like maybe if you putting, could yeah, put on a coating of something so that it stops the chemical reactions with oxygen. And, Climate control. Climate control, maybe. Maybe. That's asking a lot in the apocalypse. And some foresight, because you're you're getting the tires early on in the apocalypse, being like, I'm going to need spares in 20 years. Oh, man. In the apocalypse, I, I guess the economy, just people start hoarding things and waiting for their turn for their item to be the valuable one. <laughs> maybe there's a tire guy. A tire guy, yeah. And then yeah, just like Joel is the Oxycontin guy. That's right, yeah. Oh yeah. So you had a BF? question about this code? Yeah, I didn't I didn't know what this code was, but I think I guess later on they explain it. There's B and F, which was Ben and Frank, I guess, and then the the number is the decade of the song. Mm hmm That's clever. Yeah. yeah. I guess so a song from the sixteens means nothing. A song from the seventies means there's something new. New, uh, I think it's dr new drugs. New, new drugs, drugs for you to pick up. Yeah. And I guess eighties is a crisis. That's what the X means. Yeah, with a different color. You went out and got a different color. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, oh my god. Yeah. The uh, I was so batteries. I think would be in short supply difficult to find i'm a little annoyed that joel is storing these haphazardly willy-nilly you, know, you got time yeah you store them. all the time yep. so if there's one that's leaking you need to isolate it so it doesn't corrode others batteries you know and just get them isolated in containers as best you can so that you know they survive you got them all stacked on top of one another yeah. it's not gonna last very long joel, do you remember these like um Remember these graphing calculators that we like had to buy in school? Mm -hmm. I left I left one in my desk for like several years, and the battery leaked, and the acid corroded the the board. And 
I need to have yeah. kept. I needed to have taken care of that battery better. Yeah, and I wonder if the, the that acid leak, which causes mm -hmm. that like stuff, can yeah. corrode other batteries faster than they normally would have. I think that's true. I, mean, I would not be surprised because it's additional corrosion to that battery's compartment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, maps. Mm. Super valuable. Super valuable. Twenty years of degradation to the paper. And no Google Maps. So that's right. Super valuable. I wonder if satellites would still be up in the air, but they, they maybe would we be, don't have but... comms. I guess uh, maybe if they haven't degraded the orbits in time. I don't know how often they need a little boost. Right. So this is Joel's apartment again. Just mm -hmm. lots of lots of I, I assume this is lots of stuff. Here's his batteries. Get your shit together. Okay. <laughs> 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 not about his battery storage techniques this was i had a question uh this is a fedra goon mm -hmm. uh he's got a gun he's got a scope he's got a little flashlight he's got a helmet mm -hmm. he's got equipment do you think this is all 20 year old equipment i i think so actually i think um i think this this i mean i guess the type of rifle has been around since the 60s or something like this but the actual you're asking about the actual components or just I think, all of it I, th I think it's got to be well I guess patches we don't know if Fedra has been around since before pandemic stuff right I don't think they have I think they sprung up after so then anything Fedra labeled should be sprung up after and I suspect that anything manufactured because manufacturing takes a lot of a lot of stuff it takes a lot of people a lot of coordination i expect that anything that is manufactured was pre-existing and then repurposed so that pretty much includes everything that this guy has except maybe his clothing which i still think would be pre-pandemic stuff but they took it and added patches like yeah so they had I an embroidery machine factories yeah yeah i don't think factories are running <laughs> yeah However, that embroidery machine operator, uh, you know, if they learn their skills in the library, super Doing important. It, yeah, super important. Actually, that for propaganda purposes, getting pulled. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, this scene. So this is Joel, uh, Tess, and Ellie escaping the settlement to go drop Ellie off at this Firefly location somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're in this pipe avoiding, you know, the patrols. And it's a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, thought, I was I, like it's okay 7640 let's see here 76 what is that an hour an hour and six yeah yeah here yeah, we yeah. Go. okay here we go let's listen that is a helicopter that's a helicopter so cars are difficult to maintain but helicopters are like next level Helicopters are difficult to maintain now. Now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're talking like, what is it? It's like probably like 5, 10K per flight hour. You know, you need specialized mechanics. You need fuel, lubrication, constant timetables, you know, flight worthiness checks. I, I mean, mean, it is. Phew. Helicopters, you, you cannot have a breakdown situation because you can't just stop. Like a car, you just pull over, you're fine. Like helicopters need to be precision shit. Yeah. And not only that, say they have an operating helicopter, they're operating it for a standard routine patrol. This is every night. Every night, or at least probably every other night. I don't know, but it's so, like, what? A, How do they have fuel for this? And it's specialized fuel. It's like jet fuel, what JP7 or whatever. It's not, it's like difficult to refine. I don't understand it all, but. Interesting. You're talking a 20-year-old helicopter without spare parts? I no mean, way. Fedra no is, way. this means Fedra is next level. Like, Or maybe Fedra is super rich, actually. They just keep people poor. They would have to, because that means they've got supply chains, maintainers, all of it. Even just the, even just the resources, they have it. <sighs> I was blown away. I was blown I'm, I'm, away. I'm starting to feel more and more like Firefly has got a point. This is yeah. oppression. This isn't just survival stuff. So Fedra is putting more 
you know, work and effort into maintaining helicopters than the population. That's messed up. That's messed up. It's messed up. Wild. Oh. Violence. Oh yeah. So so this is the the drug buyer, I guess, right? He and he he was threatening Joel and Tess and Ellie. Yeah, so this and, is uh, the drug buyer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had this thought it was like the customer is not always right. Sometimes <laughs> sometimes you just gotta fuck them up. Oh my God. <laughs> and then you bring in your rage from twenty years ago. Yeah. Project it onto this guy. Rage and, and emotional trauma trauma. you you got PTSD and you're just like, hey, well fuck this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's just trying to keep his job and keep his head down. Yeah. And nope. Trauma death. I mean but that being said, it was, would it have been in this guy's interest to let Joel go? Like, I think so, right? It's, hey, like, go out there and just keep your head down. Like, we got a secret arrangement. Keep it cool. Okay, so he sees him outside. The, the guard sees Joel, Ellie, and Tess outside the gates. Mm -hmm. And by the book, he's supposed to turn them in. So maybe he thinks it's some kind of test. Or maybe somebody else saw him. Or maybe he, for some reason, he didn't just say, all right, get on your way and get out of here. Yeah. But we, we never learned what that reason was. Yeah. But because Joel's got rage. Because Joel's got rage. Well, I mean, problem solved. Yeah, problem solved. Problem solved. And this is the end of the episode. They go behind this chain link fence into the biological contamination area, which is like downtown, former downtown. Yep, yep, yep pretty awesome yeah an yeah. exclusion zone not, not the exclusion zone is awesome <laughs> <laughs> i mean the episode's awesome not the exclusion zone <laughs> well it's, it's it's like the it's like in lion king it's like that the elephant graveyard don't go there i'm oh, curious oh yeah, oh, yeah. And that is it. That's our that's episode one. Let's get to the title card here. The last. Oh wait, no, wait, I'll wait. I'll wait. <clears throat> here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah. The Last of Us, season one, episode one. Semi-stable universe. Semi-stable universe. See you next time. See you next time.